What's going on everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo and we are back for another episode review of The Real Black China. This is season one, episode 11. You shouldn't text in church. Hmm. Praise God. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think of this video with a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit that notification bell so that you will know whenever I upload new content. I also want to remind you guys to shop Andrea's clothing. Use um, coupon code AUNTIEMO15 and you will receive 15% off your purchase. I am wearing one of her shirts right now, Positive Vibes. Go check her out. My little cyber niece, Miss Briante Craig, she is out here all black girl magic on y'all ass, okay? She makes shirts that have um, positive messages on that in support of mental health and, um, you know, mental health and awareness and things like that. I, for one, am um, not ashamed at all to admit that I suffer from bipolar depression, um, and my depression has been all over the place these last couple of weeks. I think that has been contributing to a lot of why I've been tired and all that and having headaches. But... I'm just feeling positive today. I'm trying to keep myself positive and motivated. That's why I'm wearing my positive vibes. So her uh, info will be down in my description box below. Um, Andrea's clothing, coupon code AUNTIEMO15 <laughs> and you'll get 15% off of your purchase. Y'all, this episode of The Real Black China, let me tell y'all. I'ma just let y'all know now, if it's a season two, your auntie ain't gonna be reviewing it. I'm not. Y'all, this last episode got on, it was just, and I know I said it about every episode that it got on my nerves, but it's like the more and more we get into these episodes, we, we really are seeing the real black China, if this is who she really is. And if this is who she really is, I don't like her. I didn't think she was like this. I didn't think this was the kind of person that she is. But then again, you don't know her. All you see is this, you know, character when she's out and when she's in the public. But y'all, without further ado, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So let's get right on up into it. Okay, y'all. So the episode starts off where it left off last time with China and Treasure arguing over money. Because Treasure mentioned something about embezzlement. That sent China off. They're arguing. China's in the backyard yelling, going off, or just venting, cussing, or whatever, talking crap about Treasure, while Treasure's in the front yard talking with Jamal and another assistant and somebody else on the staff, right? Now, this is my thing, okay? Treasure... In my opinion, when she noticed that it started going left with that whole conversation and she wasn't getting nowhere, she should have left right then and there. So because she stayed and she continued to argue with her, she was at fault with that too, right? Another thing on Treasure. When China brought up the fact that she gave her some money, Treasure was quick to say, that was last year. Like, so what, what are we talking about that? That was last year. I, I get where China was coming from, how she gave her money, she helped her this, that, and the other. But on some real, some real nigga shit, homegirls, homeboys, if that's really your friend, you don't sit and calculate and have it ready to throw in their face what you've done for them, how you've done it for them, how many times you've done it for them, and how much money you've spent on them. That's not what a friend does. And call me wrong. Comment down below if you don't agree with what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, Treasure's whole thing was she wanted to talk with China off camera before it went left the way that it did. She said she had been trying to call China, like I told y'all in the last review. China said she seen her number and she did not answer the phone. She tried to have production reach out to China. She didn't want to talk to her. So she'd been trying to get in contact with her, but China waited until they got to filming to then come out with all this drama. Again, that is just my opinion observing. Comment down below and let me know if you think it's something different. I love when y'all comment. Whether it's something I agree on or I completely disagree with, I love to read the comments because I like, I like a healthy debate. You know what I'm saying? But anyways... China then goes in her kitchen and she's talking with Larry, the dude that's wearing the SARS mask. Why is he wearing a SARS mask? Is that supposed to be a fashion statement? Sir, when I see you with that, I think you got swine flu. 
I don't I don't see nothing fashionable about that. I see swine flu, H1N1, monkey break, outbreak. I don't see nothing fashionable about Take that shit off your face. Unless you're trying not to get sick. I mean, stay your ass in the house then. Nigga, get a bubble. But don't be walking around in no damn SARS mask. You look crazy, son. But his name is Larry, Larry the Mask Man. She's in the kitchen talking with Larry the Mask Man, basically saying how she's been there for treasure, how she's done this for her, how she did that for her because she felt bad for her. That's your friend. You seen she was in a predicament and she needed some help. You didn't deny that she didn't ask you for it. Treasure said that you offered to help her. If you offered to help her, then why go back and throw it in her face because it's in the heat of the moment and you're in an argument and that's what you want to use to throw back in her face. It was getting on my damn nerves. And then with China, if any of y'all watch this show, y'all already know, China does not make sense when she talks a lot. And I don't mean to, I don't mean it in a bad way, but her conversation makes no sense. A lot of what she says, it doesn't make sense. Like, even when she tries to argue back, it's like she doesn't know how to form her words together to make a sense. So it's a lot of, her whole conversation just be chopped and screwed. I mean, I, I, I don't get half of what she's, I get it, but it's like, no, I get what you're trying to say, girl, but just... Sit there and look pretty with your little green hair. Like, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. At this point, Jamal is outside talking with Treasure. Treasure is venting to him. Now, in a way, it seemed like Jamal was trying to stick up for China. He was like, China's whole thing is she wanted to talk to you, but she didn't want it to be drama, and you reached out to production, and you didn't reach out to her, and she didn't want everything to go left on camera. That's what the hell Treasure was saying from Jump that she wanted to talk to her friend before the cameras came just so they would know or she would know what the hell is about to go on. But Treasure been saying from the jump, she felt like she was ambushed, she felt like she was set up because she had been trying to call China, but China didn't want to reach out to her. China's EP, she already knew. She had this plan. I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna talk to this heifer on camera so we can make it good so we can get some damn ratings, right? Now again, Jamal is outside talking with Treasure, trying to talk Treasure down because she's pissed off, right? At this point, China brings her ass outside. Why the fuck are y'all still in my lawn? Why are you still in front of my house? Jamal is like, look, she on the street. It's public property. She get in the car and she leaving anyway. Like. You ain't got to come outside turned up. Then China starts to go off on Jamal. Jamal was stating facts. Though, again, Jamal's argument for trying to stick up for China didn't make a whole lot of sense either. Because you basically reiterated everything that Treasure just said. She wanted to talk to her friend off camera so she knew what the hell to expect so she wouldn't be ambushed going into everything. So once again, Jamal, in that moment, he wasn't making sense. But like I said, uh, said when China came outside, Treasure was getting in her car and she was leaving. Jamal is trying to let China know, look here, hold on, she's leaving. She's not in, she's not at your house. Yes, she was in front of her house, which I get it. China's like, look here, I kicked your ass out, leave. I, I completely get her on that. Like, why are you still outside talking? I told you to leave, leave. I get her on that. So for the people that think that I'm just coming down on China all the time, no, I'm not. There you go. You're welcome. But like I was saying, Jamal is trying to tell China, like, she's leaving. Don't worry about it. You ain't got to come outside. You ain't got to trip. China starts getting mad at Jamal. They start going back in the house. She starts going off on Jamal. Damn, they're hitting him with the door. At that point... That bitch would have got a two piece and a biscuit from your auntie. I don't play that shit. I don't care how mad you are. You don't start putting your hands on me and, and hitting me with shit because you mad. And this is your way of venting. Bitch, I would have drug her ass. That's just me, though. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'd have put the paws on her ass. But... China got a tendency of talking to her staff just any kind of way, and they allowed her to do it because everybody else that was sitting around was just quiet. They weren't saying anything. Like, it was... 
the level of ass kissing towards China that was going on in that moment was unfucking believable. I know they all needed some Orbitz gum after that because they had their tongue so far up her ass. It's like, it's ridiculous. Like, you scared to tell this woman when she wrong? Okay, hey, but I digress. Moving on from that. Y'all, so it's the day that they getting ready to go to church, right? Miss Mary come over to the house. Miss Mary came over. She ready to go praise the Lord, okay? She like, come on now, y'all already running late. Like, what, what we doing now? Where we going? How, how we gonna get there? They spend another couple minutes trying to figure out what car to take. Should we take the Rolls Royce? Should we take the Porsche? Should we take the Bentley? Should we take the Aston Martin? Like, Miss Mary's like, baby, as long as we get in there by the grace of God and we are there to serve him, hallelujah, I don't care what car we take, baby. God bless you with all of them. Get your ass in one of them less ride. You know what I'm saying? I was with Mary on that. Because you remember from the last episode, China was like, oh, I got to go get an outfit to wear to church and I got to get this. Miss Mary was like, baby, to come to the Lord. I put on an old mean pair of knickerbockers and go serve my God. That's what I, I'm saying. That's what Miss Mary was with it. So finally, they decide what car they're going to take. China's riding, or China's driving with Miss Mary, and Jamal is riding in another car, right? They pull up to the church, VIP, right in front of the church, in a white Porsche, a Bentley, whatever it was. China's got this long, green, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch hair, all the way down to her calves, damn near. Black sequence bodysuit with a cape on it and a hat cocked to the side looking like a smooth criminal. Walking up on in the church. Y'all know black folks in Baptist churches. They looking at you like, oh no, what is this sinner right here? Mm -hmm. That's how the old church ladies was looking at her ass when she was walking down the aisle coming in there, right? Now, meanwhile, Jamal is now... Before I get into this, if y'all have not seen Ashton Levi, Ashton Levi has his own YouTube channel. Every episode, the next morning, he's putting out his review, letting you guys know his take on what happened from a castmate's point of view. So I know these details because Ashton had already said it on his YouTube channel. Now, back into the story. So meanwhile, Jamal slips off to the side, not realizing that he's still mic'd up. He's on the phone with Ashton talking shit about China. Why they at church? Now, Jamal ain't on his phone. He's on Larry, the mask man. He's on his phone talking to Ashton. Now, he's texting Ashton back and forth in church talking crap about China, right? On Larry's phone. Now, the sermon that um, Bishop Jones was preaching, <laughs> baby, he put his foot in it. He was going smooth off in that sermon. I ain't going to lie. I forgot I was watching The Real Black China for a minute, and I was getting into that word that he was preaching because it was doggone good. <laughs> it was good. He was doing the doggone thing. But again, Jamal is on the phone texting, talking crap about her to Ashton. Now, China said, now you can see, it went from a little bit of church to some church, C-H-U-U-C-H. Baby, all the church mamas got up, caught the Holy Spirit and all of that, wigs was flying, hats, hats was cocked to the side. One woman caught the Spirit and took off running across the doggone church. Baby went down in the service. China asked gonna say she almost had to stop herself from busting out laughing. That show you right there, she ain't grow up in no doggone church. But then again, you know what? I ain't gonna lie, because me and my husband was saying the same thing, because I grew up in a church too, and when we was kids, me and my cousin, especially when we went to my grandma and grandpa church oh, uh, out there in Dell Valley, me and my cousin, Renee and Andrew, when them old folks caught the spirit, baby, we was rolling. We already knew which one was going to catch the spirit too, and at what time, because as soon as the preacher got to say, uh, he died, we could already see, okay, there she go. She's standing up. There she go. Oh, she about to get it. And there, we already knew it was going down. We was kids. We was rolling off of that. Now that I'm older, I'm 39, I can appreciate when the pastor said he died. I get it now. I totally get that. You know what I'm saying? Now, China does say that the message hit home for her because everything that she was going through at that point in time, Bishop Jones was hitting on. 
saying something about people who um, are supposed to be close to you. Sometimes you grow out of relationships. It's okay to grow out of relationships. A lot of people that are there for you ain't really there for you. Like, China said he was hitting on some things for her. After the service, she went backstage with Miss Mary and, you know, she got to meet Bishop Jones. He was talking to her. Before she got to meet Bishop Jones, Larry messy ass gonna give his phone to China so China can read all the text messages that, um, that, um, what's that boy name? I forgot his name. That dog on crit, that Jamal was sending to Ashton. Now, she said that threw her off completely. And you could tell that China's feelings were really, really hurt. You can see just the devastation on her face. So when she's talking with Bishop Jones and Miss Mary, she starts crying. And so they console her, they're comforting her, they pray over her. At that same time, Jamal is over there talking with production. He could notice that China was a little bit distant from him. So he's like, well, I just want to know, like, what's going on? Why is she not talking to me? Like, she don't want me to sit by her? Like, what's going on? Production doesn't want to tell him what's going on. You can hear, again, he's mic'd up and you can hear production telling him. So he's like, so what is it? Like, just tell me, what is it? What is it? And they're like, well, well, no, I'll, I'll wait and I'll let China tell you. I, I really don't want to say anything. You know, I'll just wait and I'll let China tell you. So at that point, Jamal kind of knew that something was going on. Like, it was... It was just real bizarre. The whole time that they at church, you could tell Jamal was completely disconnected. When he was talking crap about her to Ashton, he was saying how he's stressed out, how he's tired of it all. He's tired of being cussed out. He's tired of having his head rocked all the time. Just from the drama and, and everything that comes with being there for damn Black China. And that would piss me off too. Like, I, I, I don't know. That's just me. Somebody like China... I couldn't work for it. That's just me. You can't talk to me crazy because I'm going to take your head smooth off your body. I I'm too blunt. I'm too honest. If you're wrong, I'm going to let you know that you're wrong. I'm not going to kiss your ass just because you're paying me good money. No. That ain't how I work where I'm from, boo-boo. But, y'all, that was the end of the episode right there with them being in church. Now, on next episode, we see... Now she's getting into it with Jamal. That's when she ends up firing Jamal. So it's like Ashton, Treasure, Jamal, Freshy been gone. And who you got left, China? Who you got left? Oh, yeah, and I forgot to tell y'all, too. Dencia is the one that actually told Larry or told somehow or another Dencia got mixed up in this. As we remember, Dencia is the girl who she did that skin bleaching product crap with her so she's caught up in the mix some kind of way i believe that ashton said that um the whole situation i guess that what happened somehow or another ashton was saying that he vented to dencia some things that jamal was saying and so she ashton then went and showed china so i don't know it's a big old clusterfuck of drama is what the hell it is if it's anything that i missed Please put it down below and let me know. If y'all seen the episode, I want to know what y'all's opinion, uh, opinions are on it. Um, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo, we'll see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.